We are going over 11 soccer tips that are going to instantly improve your game if applied. That's coming up next. Before we jump into it, my name is Dave and this is Simply Soccer where I am producing videos every single week to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. Now, if you really want to do that, get my free ebook Game Changer down below, which is a 50 plus page ebook that's going to help you with so many different areas of your game. It's absolutely free. Again, link in the description. Now, I'm going to be going over 11 ideas here that can all help your game, but I'm only going to mention them briefly um, because if I don't, this video will be way too long. But what I am going to do is link some videos in the description that goes into each one of these in more depth. So for example, if I go over something and you're like, oh, I wanna learn more about it, check the description and I will have a video for you to go over that specific thing. So make sense? Great. Let's jump into the very first one. We're gonna go in reverse order, starting with number 11. So we're gonna start with a simple and obvious one, but I have to mention it because it's so crucial and it's mastering the fundamentals. The more you work on the fundamentals, a better a player you'll become. Even the top pros in the world work on the fundamentals all the time. This is why you see them doing rondos, passing drills, you know, dry runs, and so many different things. You will always be working on your fundamentals if you're trying to become a better player, doing them crisper, doing them cleaner, doing them faster. And so make sure you're not neglecting this and you're always working on those fundamental skills as that's what you need to master if you want to get to the top level. Number 10 is become multifaceted. Yes, you want to be good at all the fundamentals, but what are the things that help you stand out? And can you do multiple things? You see, if you're a one-dimensional player, you're not going to have much of an impact in matches. But if you're multi-dimensional, for example, a winger who can beat players one-on-one, -on -one, put in a deadly cross, is a threat from goal, uh, from uh, goal scoring situations, can make amazing runs that puts pressure on the defense, well, suddenly you're a lot to handle and it's going to raise your value as a player. So you always want to be looking for ways you can have more of an impact in your position and really aim to work on these areas often. In fact, that's a really important one. So put in the comments, I am a multifaceted player. And as an added thing, even put in the description what you're going to work on developing that's going to help you to be that. Number nine is start communicating better and more often. Now, here is something I want to say about this because a lot of players think this means, oh, I just need to start screaming and shouting and speaking more. No, get better at your communication. Many players don't communicate at all, and that's not good. You know, you're on a team. Talk to your teammates. Instruct if that's the best thing to do. But don't be that other player who's screaming, shouting and giving off commands for no reason other than to boost their own ego. Make sure the instructions you are giving are clear and make sense and are actually helping your team, but working on your communication actually will make you more valuable and it's something you can do and apply to your game pretty quickly. There's a reason your youth coach or someone has been telling you about this for so long. Even when I was a kid, it was the same. Most players, they their instincts not to communicate. So learning to do this well is only going to benefit you as you keep moving up levels. Number eight is develop confidence. Football is at least 50% mental. You know, I would even argue it's more. If you're not working on this, you are going to struggle as a player. For those of you who are in complete soccer confidence, you know about this because you've developed this area of your game and you know that it's night and day difference between being not confident and being confident. And many of you in that program have been experiencing consistent, really good results and performances on match day because you've developed this area and most players do not. You can check out complete uh, soccer confidence in the description down below if you want to learn more about it. But either way, you have to work on this area because even if you're the most skillful player on the pitch, if you have no self-belief, if you have no confidence, if you don't know how to tap into that, you're not going to play well and it won't matter that you're the best player technically on the pitch. Number seven is a big one and it's improving your soccer IQ, which I also go over in that course, but this is massive and the main one I want to give you is improve your decision making. Like I just said with confidence, this is another one where it doesn't matter how good you are, if you are making the improper decision, the one that hurts your team more often than not, 
It doesn't matter how good you are. You're not gonna, you're gonna be a liability to your team. If you're passing the ball to the wrong place, if you're not seeing your wide open man and losing the ball instead or over dribbling or under dribbling or any of these things, it's going to really affect your game. You need to improve your decision making. This takes a little bit of work, but again, it's something you want to add to your training because if you're a good decision maker on the pitch, Suddenly, even if you're a little less skillful, you're still gonna be a very valuable player. If you're enjoying this video so far or you've gotten something out of it so far, hit that like button. And now we're moving on to number six. And number six is learning how to bounce back from mistakes in matches. Look, when you're in the game, beating yourself up over mistakes, doesn't help you. In fact, I was a player who used to do this when I was younger and I had to, you know, after enough times of my coach kind of getting on my case about it, I learned to get over mistakes quickly and analyze them later. But when you're in a game, it serves you more to tune back into the flow of the game and not beat yourself up over mistakes. It's not the time to analyze those, but so many good players even take themselves out of games in the first like 10, 20 minutes because they make a mistake, they miss a chance, whatever else it is, and they just can't get over it. You have to learn how to do this you know again something I go over in my programs but it's just something you have to learn or you're gonna struggle to perform consistently there's no two ways about it the number five ties into that and it's learning from your mistakes so this is for after games now you're not beating yourself up you're just looking at your mistakes objectively and going okay how can I improve what can I do to stop making these mistakes and look for trends look for consistency like are you making the same mistake over and over again? Is it something simple that you can tweak in your training that will help you to be better at this, right? The more you analyze that, the more awareness you'll gain about what you need to improve, and then you can go to your training sessions, work on this, and you'll stop making it as frequently in matches. Number four is awareness training. This is something you want to start incorporating into your training. This is the ability to know where your opponent is at all times, or for most of the time, your teammates, the open space, and also when you get really good, understanding how that's going to shift in real time. Now, again, if you don't know that someone's behind you um, and you turn into them, you'll lose the ball. If you don't know that you have open space, you may pass it off when you could have easily turned and attacked, right? So having awareness is so crucial and you wanna get used to scanning all the time and doing different awareness drills that make it second nature for you to do that in your matches. The smartest and best players were experts at this and it's something that's only going to help you improve if you learn it. Number three is developing your your weak side. Having a developed weak foot is going to open so many doors for you in games. For myself, uh, for example, I'm a goal scorer. I'm a striker. I have scored so many goals on my left side, which is supposedly my weak side because I've worked on it so much. I am just as confident finishing and scoring on my left side as I am my right side. And that is makes me such a dangerous player because if someone thinks I'm right footed or kind of determines that I am, tries to put me on my left, I am totally fine with that. That. In fact, there are sometimes I put myself on my left deliberately with a little step over and then I'll shoot because I've worked on that. And for most positions, this will be the case. You want to start working on that left side or your weak side. It might not be left for you. But if your weak side is basically just for you to stand on, you can't do anything with it. You need to start working on this if you want to be a better player. You should at least be able to do most of the fundamentals pretty competently on your weak side. So get working on that. And once you get really good on your weak side, it just opens up so much more for you as a player. Number two is learn how to take care of your body. Look, if you want to get to the highest level of the game, if you want to play semi-pro, collegiate, or even pro, you have to learn how to take care of your body. Get proper sleep, rest and recovery, do the strength training, the injury prevention, the fitness, obviously. You have to get into that rhythm that players at that top level are already in. You need to learn what that is and start doing it yourself if your goal is to get to a higher level. Because again, like the more you look after your body, the more you can train, the faster you recover, the better, the more closer to 100%. You might not always be there. A lot of times you won't be, but the closer you'll be come game time, you know, it's the less injuries you'll have. These are all things that can derail you um, if you're not looking after them. So learn how to take care of your body. It's a huge part of the game that is being talked about more now these days, but it's a fairly new thing, but it's so important because again, the less time you're injured, the less time you're so fatigued to the point where you can only give 50, 60%, the more you can perform at your best level. And number one is something so few players do, especially lower level players. And you'll find that players towards the top, the, the professional, semi-pros, collegiate players, and the more you go up, the more you'll find they do this, and it's setting goals and intentions. You know, if you're not setting goals, 
a marker, a North Star of where you want to be going, the direction you want to be going, not just like in your career, but also in your season, even in the next few games or the next game, setting those standards, goals, and intentions are going to help you massively. Again, if this is something you haven't heard of or don't think that is, uh, it's that important, you're missing out because it makes such a massive difference, especially over time. For those of you in my product, Goals into Goals, where I show you how to set goals and intentions specifically for footballers, um, specifically for games, the season, and your career, you will have experienced the power of this and you've probably achieved many of the goals that you've been writing out through that course. And if you're not writing goals, if you're not setting intentions, it is hurting you and your growth because you have nothing to aim for. You don't know how to set goals and aim for those things and actually achieve them um, and when you know how to do this and you set them properly it radically changes your game you will see measurable results and improvements and it's something a lot of really good players do because they understand Pearson's law they understand the power of setting goals and intentions in the correct way now again if there's anything I've gone over that you want to learn more about go into the description of this video and I'm gonna give you a video that goes more in depth on that topic so for example if the soccer IQ thing is something like, oh, I need to get better at that, go into the description and I have a video for you that's going to help you improve your soccer IQ specifically. So there will be things in there for you. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Go check out something you need to look at in more depth um, after this video. Again, if you want to learn more and really hone that in and really get good at it, and I'll see you in the next video.